just making this video to help you guys through my own experience of applying the visitor visa for my family and friends. Okay, guys, so this is the starting page where you can actually find the details about the document. What does a visitor visa actually mean? Some basic stuff. The fee is actually hundred dollars. So that's mentioned here. The processing times that varies from country to country. So all of that is mentioned here. Um, next, we can go on to check the eligibility. So some very basic eligibility criteria. Of, of course, it's a tourist visa, so no big deal here. Some very basic stuff like you should have a passport, you should be in good health, no criminal records, you should be able to convince that you'll go back home, uh, enough money, all of that stuff. Then it talks about the list of documents, so you can go on here. You can see uh, you can choose your specific condition. Why do you want to visit Canada? Because the documents would vary depending on your reasons. So let's say you want to do a family visit. Uh, some of your family members are here in Canada. So who do you want to visit? Let's say an immediate family member. Uh, what's your family member status in Canada? Let's say Canadian permanent resident. Of course, this is just an example just to tell you and uh, that how you can actually find which all documents are required. Then do you plan to visit uh, with your children for more than six months? So let's say I say no. Do you qualify if you have uh, the, the vaccines or not? If you're fully vaccinated or not? Yes. So it will give you a list of all those documents also. Uh, which all documents are required. I'm not going to go through all these documents because this is just an example. And of course, it would vary from one person to the other. So now finally, we are at that stage where we can actually apply the uh, visitor visa. So this is uh, mentioned here how you can actually apply. There's a list of countries. If you belong to them, then you'll have to uh, give biometrics. If you haven't given biometrics in past 10 years for any Canadian visa. So here in this link, they have mentioned, uh, you know, how you can actually apply this visa. So steps to apply. So step one, Check if you're eligible uh, to apply to Canada that we've checked, get the document list and then apply online. So we'll do this part right now. We'll see how we can actually apply online. And then after that, of course, the step four is to give your fingerprints and photo, the biometrics, and then uh, they will process your application and you have to send your passport if they approve your application. And then you have to prepare for your uh, travel to Canada. So this is uh, some of the basic steps, uh, but we're going to see this part about applying it online, which is the most crucial part, applying it online. So I'll go back to this old link and let's say, just like we chose earlier, why are you applying the visitor visa? I say to unite with our family member. So visitor visa, how to apply for uniting with family member. So yes, I want to unite with the family member just in case if you uh, chose the wrong selection here. Uh, so in that case, you should go to that list again and uh, choose the right option, but I'll go with this one. So they say that of course you need to apply the visa through the IRCC portal. So I'll go here. Uh, go to the ICC portal. So these are the steps that I mentioned. First of all, you have to create an account and sign in Then complete the online form and upload the documents and then pay with the credit card. So of course you should have an ICC account just in case if you don't have such an account, then you'd have to create one. So um, it's been a long time. I haven't made any video of how to create an uh, account. So let's quickly do that. I want to uh, go through all these things very quickly. This is some basic stuff. So first of all, you have to go to sign up and apply apply for a visitor visa for myself. If you are doing it on someone else's behalf, then you should uh, be selecting this one. If just in case uh, you have to apply for a visitor visa for yourself and someone else as well, then you should go with this one. I'll just go with the first option here for this example. Do you already have an application in process? I'll say no. So here they're talking about the processing times that it may take from 14 to 30 business days for them to get back to you after you complete your application. So I'll just say get to the IRC portal. So over here, uh, they have got the email address that you have to provide. So I created a test, a demo email address uh, for this purpose. So test.demo123456 at gmail.com. So I'll just put that here. All right, so I've just entered the email address and as soon as we confirm the email address, this get invitation code button gets enabled. Um, click on, on that, you will actually get a invitation code. So we can uh, copy this and go back to IRCC login page. We have to paste this here. Then again, enter the email address then choose a password and then confirm that then you have to enter your name so your last name and your first name i'm not going to submit this application so it won't make much of a difference um, you have to provide your phone number so if you're let's say you're coming from india then you would need to provide your uh, number here so i'll just provide some random number here and then sign up and now a verification code has been sent to the email so we'll have to go and check that so i have my email account opened here just refresh it. So here is the email. So this is the kind of email that you'll get. And uh, we'll have to put this code there. So I'll put 708191. And confirm it. So the email has been verified now. Now we have to sign in. So we have to provide the email ID and password. Once you have done that, just click on sign in and you will be signed in. So these are all the terms and conditions. 
only once you accept it, you'll be able to uh, go ahead. So of course you have to, so first read all of it and then accept it. So now we have successfully created the IRCC account. And I hope that if you're doing it along with me, uh, along watching this video, you would have done that as well. So in this page, you don't have much. You'll see all the applications that you'll create. You'll see those applications here because it's a new account. So you don't see anything over here right now. To apply the visitor visa, you have to click on this link, apply for a visitor visa. So now again, it's telling us to check the eligibility, making sure that we have the passport, the credit card, and all that stuff. This section over here is pretty important. So please don't miss it. Now, if you want to do it for a group, maybe your spouse or your children, you can actually go ahead and you need to provide the information for them as well. For this particular example, I'm just going ahead, not going to apply for any other person. So selecting no here. Then you want to apply for a visitor visa or super visa. Why do you need the visa? So of course you can have your own reasons here. Maybe to visit the Canada as a tourist, medical procedure, maybe for business reasons. I'll just select to visit other family who are not listed above or friends for less than six months. But of course you need to select only that criteria that applies to you. So here you would need to enter all the details, but you would have a character limit of 475. So choose what you type wisely, but 475 is a decent number. So you can actually explain your situation. Now, of course, this section needs to be in a lot more detail. This is just an example. So I've just explained it in a few words. Please make sure that you are actually illustrating it and trying to utilize this 475 character limit. Then when will you enter Canada and when will you leave Canada? So maybe, maybe I would just use the same dates that I've mentioned over here. So let's say November 2000, like 1st of November, 2022 to 31st of December, 2022. If you know your UCI, then you can put it over here. This is optional. If not, you can skip it. Save and continue. Now it will tell you, you would need a valid passport, a letter of invitation. So this letter of invitation is there because you chose the option of uh, visiting your family member. It might be different documents that might be required if, if you choose the different reason for visiting Canada. Then it tells you about the information that you need to enter in there. So you can continue the application. Are you applying on behalf of someone? I'll say no for this example. Then you have to enter all the personal details over here. So let's say I'm just going to put the same details. Of course, I've just put some random details over here. Then you have to provide your passport number, regular passport. Let's say India, again, India. Of course, you would choose your country from where your passport has been issued. Then you have to provide the number here. So let's say, I've, I'll say, this is just a random number provided here. Then you have to provide the date of issue of the passport and then the expiry date as well. So I've given the dates here, but of course you'll provide this only after checking your passport and are you a lawful permanent resident of United States? If you have a, a green card, if yes, uh, you can provide it. I'll just say no. Have you held a Canadian visitor visa in the past 10 years? If you have had it, then you can select yes. If no, then you can go with no. Do you currently hold a valid US non-immigrant visa? If you have it, yes, then no. I'll just go with no. Are you traveling to Canada by air? So of course, most people would be traveling uh, to Canada by air just in case you're coming from India. So select yes, save and continue. Country and territory you were born. So let's say, India again, and I'll put Delhi here. Are you a citizen of more than one country? So if you are from India, India doesn't actually offer dual citizenship. So you can just select no over here. So which country or territory are you a citizen of? So again, you can select India. Of course, you have to select your country of citizenship. You can select this here. I am a citizen of this country or territory since birth, but of course this might differ from one person to the other. Then do you have a valid national identity document? So if you say yes, then you'll have to provide a document number. So just in case you're from India, in that case, you'll need to provide your Aadhaar card details here. I'll just say no and uh, proceed with it. Have you used another name in the past? If yes, you can select yes, provide the details and proceed. If no, you can just go on to say no. Now, what's your residential address? So of course, this detail might be different from the details that are there in your passport. Maybe you're applying the visa from a different country, maybe you're living in Dubai or somewhere other, then you need to provide the exact information. But let's say I'll just choose India over here and uh, I'll just put test everywhere. Of course, code is optional, so I'm just skipping it, but of course you don't have to skip it. You have to put all the details, exact details here, no discrepancies. Is your mailing address same? I'll say yes. And here you have to list your current country or territory of residence and add all the countries or territories where you've lived for the past five years for more than six months. So let's say if you visited UK or, or uh, somewhere in Europe or any other country for less than six months, you don't have to mention it, but if you did, then you'll have to add it. So here I'm just providing the information for India because it said that you have to start from your home country. This would again differ from one person to the other. So please make sure that uh, you provide the exact details that are applicable to you. Saving it here. So basically, uh, you know, some of the information got saved over here. If you choose to add more countries, then of course, there'll be more of them listed here. So I'll choose to save and continue. 
So basically, if you provided your biometrics in the past 10 years, then it would be reused. If not, then you'll need to give it again. I'll just say no over here. It tells me that you'll be required to submit your biometrics after you pay the biometric fee and you submit your application. Save and continue. Now, because I gave the reason that I'll be visiting someone, so that's why it's asking for those details. So I'll just put some random name here, family member. You have to provide the exact address. So I'm going to give a random address here. It says one choice click. Okay, I'm just going to select this address. Of course, it will choose all the options here. If you actually choose the manual input address, if you select this checkbox, then you need to manually fill all these details. Then you have to provide the uh, telephone number. So I'll say cellular, Canada, US. So I'll just provide some random number here. Then you need to provide the email address. So I'll say test at test. Dot com as someone else also invited you so if maybe you have other friends or family members you can provide their name here save and continue then about the finances so how much money do you have for your stay in canada try to provide the maximum amount here but no false information let's say i say fifteen thousand dollars if let's say you're a student and you don't have enough money maybe your father is providing you money so in that case you can just mention that okay fine someone else is providing me that money and provide those details here i'll just say no and move ahead now it's asking about the education history. Of course, it does not matter if you've actually studied, if you have passed your high school or not. But if you have done it, then you would need to provide those details here. So if I select yes here, then it would ask a lot of questions. I'm just selecting no, because of course, this would be varying from one person to the other. Then military, I would say no. Give all details of your employment in the past 10 years. I'm just going to add some random details very quickly here. So once you add all of that, then it will give you the option to save and continue. Now it will ask you about the travel history. In the past five years, have you traveled to a country other than the one where you are a citizen? So now this is different from staying. This is about the travel now. So even if you have traveled for three, four days to a different country, you need to update that over here. So wherever you have traveled in the past uh, five years, you would need to provide all of that information over here. Uh, I'm just going to skip it and say no and move ahead. Now it's asking about Canada itself, if uh, you have stayed beyond the validity of your status, if you have ever been refused the visa or permit. So I'll say no to both of them. Save and continue. Then about the criminality. So of course, you can check whatever applies to you. I'm just going to select no over here. Please make sure that you read all these questions very carefully and then answer them. About the political party, I'm going to say no in both of these. Have you had a medical exam performed by the ICC panel physician within the last one year? So if yes, you can select yes. If no, then you can select no. I'm just going to select no over here. It's asking for some questions in the last two years. Have you been diagnosed with TB? Say no. Please select whatever applies to you. I'll just select no to these two questions. Some more questions about the medical background. Currently receiving dialysis treatment. Uh, so please select whatever actually applies to you. I'm just going to select no here. Then it's asking for the family information. Select whatever applies to you. If you select married, it will ask some of the questions about your relationship, about your spouse. Uh, I'm just going to select single here so that it doesn't ask me too many questions. Do you have any biological adopted or stepchildren? So I'm going to select no here. Please select whatever is applicable to you. Save and continue. Then it's asking about the parents. So of course, you need to provide some details about the parents here. I've just provided the information for my father. Of course, you can provide the information about both of your parents. I've just provided this information so that it enables the save and continue button. Now about the language of the applicant. So if you speak Hindi or whatever language, if you're from Gujarat, then you can actually select Gujarati here. There are tons of languages that are mentioned here. I'm just going to select Hindi. Can you communicate in English or French? So, so select whatever applies to you. I'm just going to select English. What language do you want us to use to contact you? So I'll say English. Save and continue. The email address of the applicant. So I'll provide that demo email address. Saved and continue. Telephone number. So you need to add it. Of course, this is very critical information. If you're from India and you have an Indian number, just provide whatever. Uh, number you have. I'm just going to provide a random number again. I hope there are 10 digits. Saving it, then proceeding. So now basically it has provided me with all the information, a summary of whatever information I have provided to them. So if you want to edit any of that, then you can go on to click on it. I would highly recommend to review that information. Take your time to review it. Rather spend some decent amount to review all of this because none of this information should be incorrect. And as I told you, you can edit if you find any information is incorrect. Save and continue. Now it will tell you about the documents that you would require. So finally, this page is here. Now about the letter of invitation, you need a letter from your relative or your family member or friend, whosoever is inviting you, then your passport, then the proof of funds as well. There are some other optional documents and I would highly encourage you to actually provide these documents. NOC letter from your employer that can actually help 
if you have any documents to prove your roots with your home country, to prove that you'll go back to your home country, provide that. Uh, because I haven't uploaded these documents over here, so it won't let me to move to the next page. But basically, the next page would be the payment and the declaration, and the application would be complete after that. Now, you need not complete all of this application in one go, just like I did right now. I think you'll get 60 days to complete. The only couple of steps left out after you upload these documents would be to pay the fee, providing your consent, and then completing the application. Very simple. So guys, I really hope that this video would help you and answer many of your queries that you might have while filling the application. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you want any other specific video, please let me know in the comment section below. And if this video helped you, please click the thumbs up button and show some love in the comment section. Thanks a lot for watching this video.